Hey guys, me, Ronald Chris Tomer here on this Thursday. Our storm system now officially hitting the West Coast with heavy precipitation. Washington State, uh, the coastal range of BC, lots of rain down here through California. Remember, there is a little bit of an atmospheric river push in this, at least moderate intensity. The problem with that is it uh, brings a lot of warm air. So we're looking at very high rain snow lines up and down the West Coast. In fact, around the Tahoe area. Let me take you in just a little bit closer. I mean, it's primarily rain at this point. It's just starting to encroach upon Lake Tahoe, uh, a lot of the Truckee area. Hasn't made it down to parts of the southern uh, High Sierra uh, into Whitney or Mammoth just yet, but it's on its way. The problem is we're probably looking at rain snow lines of at least 9,000 feet, uh, maybe even higher at the onset. And then towards the end, the rain snow line will probably drop down to about 8,000 at times. It's just going to be a warm storm. But if you are higher than that, you've got very heavy precipitation um, on the way. All right, let me show you the uh, water vapor satellite. And it is very obvious. Here's our area of low pressure spinning like a big bowling ball. A uh, nice dip in the jet stream here. Your moisture on the water vapors and the whites and the blues, and you can see it is just streaming in out ahead of this uh, area of low pressure. So what will happen with this? Well, a piece of it's going to go north. It's going to split. And then this is going to sink all the way down here to the south. And it's both of these areas of low pressure, it's going to take, they're going to take their time. Probably going to sit for a couple of days before they make their move into the interior. But nonetheless... By the 16th, we're looking at snow for Utah, uh, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana. So eventually, all of the interior Rockies will get hit by this. Here are my bullet points. So there's our West Coast storm system. We talked about the high rain snow line. Split flow, storm system 16, 17. Now behind it, and I'll show you this on the pressure charts, there's a whole nother storm system that will come racing in on the coattails for 1118, 1119. And then there's probably one additional storm system even behind that. So we've got a nice active stretch here. And here are the, uh, the odds of best snow accumulation for Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and Interior BC. So for example, um, in Utah, and that should read 1114 right there. So 1114, so on Friday, very light snow accumulation. It will be brief. Uh, the afternoon, evening of 1115, um, light. That's really just the very front edge of the storm system. And then it's heaviest for a lot of the Wasatch. Uh, Brian head all the way up to Sundance and the Wasatch up north. 1116, 17, and 18. That's when you're going to see the bulk of your accumulation and some colder air come in and push the rain snow line to our lower, eleva lower elevation. Another storm system, 1119 and 1120 with light to moderate accumulations. So in Colorado, 1116, 1117, moderate to heavy accumulations, 1118, 1119, moderate to heavy, heavy accumulations, and then 1120 and 1121. So that's how you read that. I won't go through all those dates. Here's the forecast radar. So we'll start this up at lunchtime today, Thursday, November 13th. Notice there is your West Coast storm system and very heavy precip in uh, California right there. All right, let me push this ahead in time. So here's the dinner hour, right there. All right, this is 5 a.m. on Friday. Now you can really start to see, we've got an area of low pressure here and another one down here. So a bit of a split flow, both of them will basically cover all the Rockies with snow chances. All right, so there's your lunch hour on Friday. Look what's happening there. You've got a nice shot of snow coming through Idaho into the Tetons, parts of Montana getting some snow as well. There's our low starting to make its move into Southern California. All right, there's the dinner hour. Here is 5 a.m. on Saturday, November 15th. There's the lunch hour. Um, so there's your dinner hour. Let's move into the early morning hour. So there's 5 a.m. on Sunday, November 16th. Look what happens. This low just blows up right into a much bigger storm. Look at the circulation around this thing. So you get a, a second shot, a double dose there, because all the precip comes back to the High Sierra. Now you're getting heavy precip over the Wasatch, 
Brian Head, Arizona Snow Bowl, Tetons, Idaho, Western Colorado seeing snow at this point, and all of this will be moving in this direction. So it's just a matter of time before that low eventually it stalls and then it pulls out and it starts to affect all of the Rockies. All right, let's look at the uh, the pressure charts here. So these are atmospheric pressure anomalies. This is Friday 11:14, so tomorrow. Um, there's our area of low pressure there. There's the low moving to the north. Deep area coming off the northeast. So our big high is now up here. It finally has been dislodged. Um, the anomalies for 11.16 into 11.17, there's our low that finally pulls out to affect the rest of the Rockies. And look what's behind it. Another drop in pressures. Deep pressure drop up here in the northeast with cold and snow. That's Sunday 16th into the 17th. Here's 1119. Now, this is the next storm that runs in on the coattails. This is 1118, 1119, probably into 1120 when we're going to see snow. Nice drop in pressures here across the West. That's where the action is. It's all across the West. All right, let's look at the precipitation. So this is a five day. So this runs us through about the 19th. Total precip as if everything fell as rain. Now, where you see the reds, that's approximately two to three inches of liquid. Where you see the yellows, that's a key break point. Because where you see the yellows over a five-day period, Wasatch, Tetons, Idaho, Northwest Montana, very select locations across Colorado, that's an inch of liquid. That typically would be your foot line. That's going to be a foot of snow or more. Um, in many of those spots. So that's kind of the key. You look for the yellows on that chart. Let's look at snow. So this is a 10 to 1 snow forecast. Five days ahead. This runs us through about the 19th. Where you see these bright whites over the high sierra, the southern high sierra, that's two feet. In general, anywhere you see the dark purple, that's in excess of six inches at least. The bright purples are a foot. And where you see the whites, that's two feet. There's a lot of snow here, and that corresponds to that total precip chart I just showed you. I mean, there's a lot of places that will get at least a foot of snow on this map. Pretty much all of the interior Rockies. Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, parts of Colorado, parts, the High Sierra, and of course, B.C., Alberta. Let's move to the official forecast here that I've got. So here's what I put together. Um, total accumulation by 1119. 10 to 20 inches, didn't change it for the Wasatch. The high end amounts, little in Big Cottonwood Canyon, but look down here. Brian Head and Snowball, I moved those numbers up a little bit to 18 inches. In Colorado, the biggest numbers are in, uh, across the western slope in southwest Colorado, where typically you see these Pacific storms of Pacific origin come in. The western slope almost always does the best, unless you get a big setup across the front range, but we're not going to see that. So generally a foot down there in the San Juans, uh, anywhere from 6 to 12 up here across the western slope. Less in Summit County, less across the Front Range High Peak resorts of Loveland, A Basin, Keystone, Winter Park, Breck, less. 4 to 8 didn't change a thing down there, northern New Mexico. 1 to 2 feet across a lot of the High Sierra, but again, very high rain snow line, 8 to 9,000 feet. Mount Shasta will do more mid to higher elevations on the mountain, looking at three feet. Uh, generally six to 12 up here across the Pacific Northwest, and six to 10 up here, five to 10 through a lot of interior BC and Alberta, 10 to 12 in Idaho, uh, eight to 10, maybe eight to 12. Maybe I should have went 12 at Jackson Hole through the 19th. You get the idea. 8 to 12 inches would likely be the spread there. Uh, but again, it it may be more over the Tetons. Let's look at the northeast. So a nice couple of shots of snow here. So one right there and then another one right there. Two different areas of low pressure. And again, where you see the deep purples, that's at least 6 inches. Where you see the bright pinks, that's a foot or more. And there's a number of places that could be at that foot line. So here's my forecast for the Northeast. Uh, grand totals by 1119. 
So I've got 15 at Stowe. I've got 15 at Jay Peak. I've got a foot at Mount Washington. So those are the big winners there. Less southern Vermont, a lot less southern New Hampshire. Five Sunday River Sugar Loaf. Eight up on Tremblant, Whiteface. The issue with Snow Ridge is how much is going to be rain versus snow. Um, so that's a little bit tricky. All right, let's look at some snow plumes. Just This gives us a longer range type of outlook. From Mount Washington, I have no doubt we're going to get a foot. Uh, this believes the ensemble mean, this is a bunch of different runs, and you're looking at a mean right there by November 28th, so at least a foot. Some of the air bars are up around 15 inches. We know that's going to be the case, at least I do. J-Peak, uh, this should be easy to get to 13. Um, some of the air bars are up around 15. That's probably where we're going to end up by November 28th. So clear signal here, a lot of agreement that we're going to get to at least a foot for Mount Washington, J-Peak, and I think Stowe as well. Here's Jackson, Wyoming. So this cranks out a lot of snow for Jackson in town by November 28th. Um, by the 19th, this was where all my forecasts went out to, in town this has about five and a half. Up in the Tetons, I think, what was I saying, eight to 12? So that seems very consistent. And last stop, Berth had Pass. Uh, eight and a half, but again, a very slow period through about the 16th, 17th with uh, high pressure. But once we get into the 17th, then we start to see some accumulation and the numbers gradually go up. We're not talking about big time snow, though, for Berthet Pass, Winter Park, Eldora, Loveland, Keystone, A Basin. Less in those areas, more across the western slope of Colorado, like Copper West. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for this uh, this mountain weather update. Always appreciate you tuning in here. We've got what looks to be a very nice active stretch ahead for the West. Take care and have a great day.